All right. I just got out of the shower, as you can probably see. I don't have a shirt on. It's very warm here. The AC's been blowing all day, and it's still warm. So I'm just going to do this video, hopefully, by hand okay like this. And I apologize that this is the case, but I really just want to finally get this out there. So um, I started to write a blog about my mom's passing, and I just couldn't do it. It was too difficult. Um, I think I did it like a I tried to do it a couple weeks after she passed, and I know it's a big thing for people to do as part of the grieving process so that you could go back to that and say, oh, see where I was then and, and see where I am now. The problem that I'm having is, like, I feel like I can't write it because when I start writing it, then I cry and I have these reactions, I have these triggers, and then I can't get through it, and it's too much. Um, especially recently I've been sick, uh, so I've pretty much been sick for, like, weeks I mean, I, I got worse uh, after I came back from L.A., but before that, I was a little bit sick, and then I got rid of it kind of just by taking emergency, so I think it was just inevitable. But anyway, today is June 6th. It's been 90-something days since my mom has passed, and I feel like if I don't get this on a recording, uh, regardless of how crappy like this is because I'm holding my phone, um, I don't think I'm ever going to get it done if I don't do it now. Um, because I'm already forgetting things. My details are already not great. So let's start, I guess, from the beginning. Um, February 18th was Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I want to say, Civil Rights Day. Woot. Um, I had the day off. Um, I was sick at that time, so I wasn't taking care of my mom uh, for that weekend, and I really didn't want to go see her because on chemo, you know, your your immune system is weakened already, and then if that's the case, and then you're around people that are sick, they could get you sick, and it, my entire family got me sick. My uh, my stepdad and my brother were both sick. Um, my half brother. And it, it was shocking that my mom didn't get sick from them, but I got sick from them. Um, and so I was like, I don't want to be cooking for you and touching your food and then getting you sick. So I wasn't there that weekend or I think a couple of days before that, probably like, I don't even know, probably like, I want to say at least a few days before that. Um, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, maybe, or something like that. So I was like, just go to the doctor, see how you're doing. Actually, it was I think that was tire, that entire week. See, here's where my details are gone. I think it was that entire week because I didn't go with her to that Monday and that Wednesday to get her port put in or her port taken out. And I remember she was telling me on Monday or Tuesday that she had some pain. And I was like, okay, if you have pain, you need to go in on Wednesday when you get your port taken out and tell them that you're having pain and have a physician look at you and see what it is. It wasn't the same pain she was having before. It was something different. So then that Monday, my mom messages me on Facebook. I'm in the hospital. I'm awaiting surgery. I'll let you know more later, but I'm going to be in the ICU for a while. I think she was scared and maybe didn't know how to tell me what was happening because she went into the hospital apparently Sunday evening, like maybe midnight or one o'clock because she was having so much pain. And then they had her waiting for a surgeon for so long. At least this is what I, I think I remember of the incident. Um... She was waiting for a surgeon for so long, and I guess, here's the bullshit. When they brought her in, they were like, well, you're in a really bad place, and so your two options are you could have this surgery, um, we could do it microscopically or laparoscopically, that's what it is. We do it laparoscopically, however, if that doesn't work, we might have to cut you open. If that doesn't work, you might die. So your options are surgery. Or you could go into hospice right now. My mom was like, I don't want to go into hospice right now. But I think my mom didn't really know how bad it was. Um, that being the case, that doctor's an asshole. <laughs> um, so he basically gave her those options. They did the surgery. 
Um, and you know, I didn't know that my mom was having the surgery, like for sure, because I told her when she sent me that message, that was like Monday evening around midnight. And I was like, I don't know what to say to that. I'm awake. Tell me what happens when the surgeon comes in. They said the surgeon was going to come in soon and they were going to schedule a surgery soon. Well, she had to wait until like three o'clock the next day, like three o'clock the next day. I'm all day, not just that time, but all day I called, I think, 18 times, I think, in 12 hours, just trying to reach a nurse for my mom. Anybody, any doctor, any nurse I could talk to. Um, the closest I got was I actually got a nurse and then she was like, I'm busy right now. Can I call you back when I um, have a minute in like 10 minutes? And then she never called me back and I tried calling and I didn't get anybody on and on. It was like that. So I'm worrying the shit out of myself. Um, and, um, I'm just like, I'm sick. I could get my mom sick. If I go and see her after surgery, I could get her sick. And I don't want her to get sick from me and then die because of me. So I was contemplating, do I go to the hospital? Do I not go to the hospital? I don't know what the fuck to do. So basically I'm talking to my godmom, you know, on and off. My grandparents didn't know that she was in the hospital Sunday. Um, I think she they found out when my brother came home Sunday evening. Um, and when he found out, because my stepdad didn't tell us. Um, he didn't call anybody. Um, I found out that she was actually going through with the surgery because she didn't reply back to me on Facebook. Um, when he posted it on Facebook. Um, so I was like, what the fuck? So... I got really mad because that entire time I was trying to reach her or reach somebody that knew what was going on with her. I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't know that he had a cell phone. Um, well, actually, I knew he had a cell phone. He had gotten it recently because he's always playing on it all the time um, when we, you know, were doing things around the house. Um, he was, like, glued to it. But he never gave me a cell phone number and that was that. I mean, basically like he, I didn't have a reason to have his number and I guess he didn't care to look through my mom's phone that he had access to, to find my number, whatever. Same thing with Mike. He had Mike's number apparently, but didn't respond or didn't say anything to him. Um, so regardless of me being upset about that, um, my mom got a surgery. God, I don't remember the exact time, you know, anymore. It was like six maybe at night. And so that was like three hours later. And I was like, it's been too long. I don't know what's going on. So she calls me and she just gets out of surgery. Literally just out of surgery, just woken up. Hi, Christina, I just got out of surgery. I just want to let you know I'm fine. Talking like that, like very muttered, very hard to understand. I start crying like a baby because I wasn't sure if I was ever going to hear her voice again. And that's why I was so mad because as my mom's child, like you should fucking call me and tell me that she's going into surgery. You should get her on the phone for me so that I could talk to her just in case, because I was so beside myself not knowing if I should go to the hospital or not. And the one thing that I did get from the hospital that they actually told me was that if you're sick, it's a really bad idea to come into the ICU. So, duh. Like, I knew they were going to tell me that, which is why I just wanted to ask and have them tell me that so that I could justify why I wasn't going to see my mom when she could die on the operating table. So not only that, but, you know... My stepdad leaves during the surgery, and so I think my mom's alone. And she calls me, and I I start crying so much, because what if I never heard her voice again? What if, what if that was it? What if I never got to say goodbye? That would have been a terrible ending, and I... I don't think it was a great ending that she got anyway, but... It was something. I got to say goodbye. I got to to hold her and to hug her and to, to, to see that she went peacefully. Like, I got that opportunity. And as much as it is traumatic and um, it's been very hard for me to deal with, like, I'm so grateful for that. So when she called me and she sounded like 
a fucking child. She couldn't say full sentences and she started falling asleep on the phone while I was talking to her and <coughs> I was trying to get Tom's number from her and stuff and he, she finally gave me his number, you know. Um, it just took like 10 minutes, I feel like. I don't know, I wasn't on the phone that long with her but I was just so so relieved that she had made it through and I was so ecstatic because uh, I didn't know at the time that the surgeon had given the option to her of hospice but to know now and to look back at that I mean she could have died right then definitely it was it was it was a definite option like it was you know I think they were saying that it was probably like 80 percent chance that she would die either during the operation or um, because of what had caused the operation to happen which was that she had a tear um, in her colon and she was leaking her feces into her abdomen so she was toxifying her body um and that they had to pull out three liters of feces um from her abdomen that she had poisoned herself that much um probably over the course of several days um and i feel like if she was having that pain on monday and she she listened to me and she went in on Wednesday and said, hey, I'm having this pain and had a physician look at her. And if I was there to advocate for her, then maybe it would be different. I can't, I can't justify that, right? Like this is the bargaining part or the guilt part that you feel with grief. Like I can't justify that. There's no way that me not being sick and going with her and, and advocating for the pain that she had would have changed anything because she had stage four cancer. Like, you don't come back from that you just push as hard as you can until you can't anymore and to be honest she's a strong fighter and she she fought as hard and as long as she could and even though that was only a few months it was better than nothing and you know it was it was some time and I'm grateful for that so let me stop this video is already super long let me stop the video here and then I will um, come back to a part two um, talk about after surgery what happened um, and then probably part three we'll be talking about the end of her life